Good. Let us start. So today the science workflow and uh, at the end of the, this session you will be able to understand what is data science, what's the role of data scientist and as a data analyst uh, scientist which approach you should have to follow to implement these data science three points at the end of the day. And let's uh, start by defining the, this data science. Data science is an interdisciplinary field which can focus on, on extracting knowledge or insights from a given data set. So analytics, all the term. As a data uh, scientist, or you should have to have uh, a knowledge of uh, extracting insights from a given data set as if the, the data is massive and it can be in various varieties. So you should have to have the ability to, uh, to take innovative insights on the given data set. So one quality for a, a good data scientist or efficient data scientist is to be innovative and distinct to apply different techniques for extracting these useful insights in order to solve the business problem. So as a data scientist, you should have to have the knowledge for domain knowledge and also you should have to have strong mathematical knowledge and we should have to have a statistical knowledge new things from the given data which can solve the business problem for your so am i clear so we should have to have to follow a certain streamlined approach in order to create these data mining or machine learning projects. Uh, so for them, there are different methodologies are available like KDD or SEMA or CRISP. And for our purpose, we are using this uh, cross-industry process for data mining as a framework in order to implement our data science projects. And it was a widely accepted uh, data mining framework or to implement machine learning algorithms in machine learning project so it provides for us a structured approach you know, to plan these machine learning projects or data science projects and also this crisp can be robust and it is a well proven methodology to implement uh, machine learning projects and also data projects so this scripts have six steps uh, which can tell you where to start and when did it end your machine learning project. So from the perspective of uh, CRISP, we can see uh, the first step is, or the first phase is to understand the business clearly. So when you say understanding about the business, you should have to understand everything about your uh, current uh, business problem like uh, What's your, the objective of your business? And what's a specific uh, business? And also you have to gather information like what type of resource that they have. Uh, or the 
is not processing machine or uh, storage machine. Uh, then you should have to gather information about this thing and also the your managers stakeholders assumption about the uh, current problem and business related issue and what are the risks uh, while you are implement uh, solving this business problem so you should have to understand the uh, solving the problem you can have uh, you, you will make or uh, unexpected error so this type of risks should have to be clearly stated at the business understanding level and also here uh, for the analytical goals you should have to plan uh, algorithm you should have to use what type of data to list all these things and uh, the last step in this business understanding is you should have to write the all insight you found from the uh, business stakeholders and you'll have uh, a clear startup for your problem and you once you are done with this step you it's known that you have finished your uh, problem framing or business problem framing step so you have clear understanding about what the problem is what problem is that and how you're going to solve you can imagine which type of solution will help and this this should be uh, clearly defined in business business understanding phase and the second one is the second step is data understanding or the the process of uh, acquiring your data and also exploring data and while you are exploring your data, you should have to check for the quality of your data. So here at this stage, you can have different data sets, like you can collect data from uh, internal or external database, or you can collect data from uh, uh, internet, or you can collect data from local data, uh, log files, Anything, any data source which can uh, which can you assume which data will be gathered and collected for you, and this is called as a data acquisition step. Then, once you get whatever whatever you need for your uh, problem or for your business problem, you should have to check what the data contains and which bar uh, which variables or attributes are included in the data do i need additional data in order to decide this kind of questions you should have to go uh, to explore the analysis or data explore, uh, exploration step and the in this exploration step you can and see uh, your data quality or you can spot like if there are missing values in your data and those missing values are most of the time a problem for your you you will spot those uh, problems with, which are found in, in your data set uh, uh, for example for this missing value values so this data can, can doesn't teach your model anything uh, almost uh, it degrades your model performance so you should have to discard this data and you should have to to extract insight from uh, exploring a label to be by uh, each uh, attributes found in your data set or you can go to this aggregate data aggregation step or you can uh, go to this uh, merging or
data exploration by uh, having additional uh, features for your data and also you can you can identify these dependent and independent variables which are found uh, in your data set for your specific problem and also here you should have to limit what what type of uh, data attribute attribute size and once you have finished confirming that your data sets are enough to solve your business problem you should have to go to the next step which is the data preparation step in the data preparation step you should have you have uh, three more tasks like uh, it's a process of uh, cleaning and transforming your data into the way that can be understandable by the machine learning algorithms so here you are having uh, like uh, making correction on the errors which you found on the previous steps so and of, of missing values and values outliers can be performed here have an to certain understandable manner by the martial learning algorithm and which can scale your data value and also the last thing you can uh, create a future engineering or you can have a combination of, of the uh, data attributes to in, in in order to have additional future the data preparation step uh, as you know that the uh, data is massive so it, it is high dimensional data so you need to reduce this high dimensional data into uh, low dimensional data using this uh, conversion techniques like pca or any uh, conversion mechanism so once you have done with this your data is already prepared and it's clean from any error the next step is to model your data so on the modeling phase you should have to have uh, to select the appropriate uh, algorithm or model for your problem like uh, this model can be uh, supervised or unsupervised uh, machine learning model uh, uh, the unsupervised we have uh, clustering algorithms so define which uh, specific algorithm or which model can fit my uh, problem well and which model can give me insights uh, or a proper insight for my uh, problem so once you you choose your model for modeling purpose you start to build your model here at this phase you have to have the you have to have the training and testing data and also validation data set so you should have to chunk your uh, data set into three parts like which we call it as a training set a testing set building phase you are you are initially defined the model parameters so algorithm then your at data set because we need this training and test Relation data is differently in order to enhance and to the model generalization capability because it can be our model training on some here also we can. We are unable to 
fine tune our model parameters so we will add additional and help us to advance on our data set data set are attractively the best performing model uh, point and once we get this best performing model our model in part will finish its work and the next step is for evaluation So on the evaluation phase, you have different. Uh, um, Alex, will you let, let me present for you? So you can evaluation go ahead techniques and like uh, accuracy, box. sensitivity, Malik? specificity, and right. I should get this. Oh. And, and many, many more, more are there. According Bring to your problem, you have to use the, those evaluation okay. techniques and evaluation metrics. The, what evaluation criteria do I have? And um, Malet. Hello. Yeah. Uh, Walker, what did you say? Okay. Malat, the mic is not working very well. Maybe you can send your presentation to Lou Bucker and he can present. No, 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 so he's in the speak. background. Sorry. I, I have the presentation. I'll just present from my screen here. Yeah. I don't think she can hear us. Oh. Yeah, let me present for you while you just um, walk us through it. Okay. It's coming up now. So, I think we are here, right? Can you proceed from here? Yeah. Yeah. Is that clear now? Mm. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is clear now. It is clear now. Let me just... Let me, uh, okay, let for me the evaluation, we have uh, different yes. evaluation. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I think I talked to also to some of them actually on that one, like especially the data download. So, for this evaluation purpose, we have different evaluation techniques out there, either your problem is either classification or clustering. From those, you should have to choose according to your problem domain. And we have here accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, F score are there as an example. And based on uh, your problem, you should have to select uh, effective evaluation metrics like your evaluation, what will be your evaluation criteria in related to your uh, data mining uh, success criteria and also what will be your result and the simplicity of your algorithm and the business requirement for your uh, problem and also what are the deployment costs for your uh, evaluation metric choice you should have to check these all things and for the next one is deployment the deployment part so you once you have finished modeling and evaluating your uh, model it's all about it's all done on the training set and the, the development phase is also uh, finished here 
So when we come to the deployment phase, it's going to be deployed in the real environment. So no error is tolerated here. Therefore, your model should have to be tested as a, a real-time testing. And the real-time testing shows your model performance on the real data set. Then uh, you should have to have uh, to present your insights for the business world who are stakeholders uh, on your business, uh, uh, on your pro uh, problem domain, like uh, using this PowerPoint and uh, different visualization techniques which can help non-IT people to understand your insights and also your best communication will help you to uh, discuss more about your uh, findings so when you communicate better with non-IT people with your found, uh, find, findings you should have to consider things like uh, how I'm presenting for them, uh, what did they understand for me. So I should have to add more pictures for my uh, findings, or I should have to add additional um, explanation on here, on my uh, findings. So these things should have to be uh, well for stakeholders. Then once you are finished and they are okay with this thing, you will create what are hardware specifications, software specification, what human resource did I need for to deploy this deployment. Basically, there is, should have to be a monitoring session and maintenance for uh, uh, what you deploy or what is in the real environment. So if there is a model performance reduction, so you should have to fix, go back and fix, maintain everything related to your model. This is all about the data science workflow if you have a uh, uh, question let us discuss or else i can show you a demo on the twitter data set any question Can I stop the presentation? Okay. Uh, let us proceed to the demo part and we will see how things are going there. Okay. You can continue. Vincent, you can continue. Thank you. Um, now on the last, on the last, <laughs> the last part of deployment, when you talk of uh, deployment uh, plan and then you talk of hardware, you mean uh, uh, you need to factor in the hardware programming part of your solution? Like if you are recommending something to a company, do you mean like uh, uh, programming of the hardware? Is it part of your uh, duties as uh, a machine learning engineer or, yeah? And is it part of your duty to recommend human resource uh, necessary for, for a company or that is supposed to be evaluated by the company themselves? Okay, uh, here for deployment purpose, yeah. you didn't uh, reformat or you didn't plan for this hardware manufacturing, but you should have to have a certain uh, specification in order to implement when we think of this big data uh, pro data processing, we have to think of like a processing machine, do the company have uh, how much to should it, it have to invest to gain this processing machine and storage 
from that perspective only your plan is uh, our my model needs this 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 hardware and which have the specification of this 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 thing and also i need this this kind of software infrastructure in order to deploy my model and also human resource perspective so i need this 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 type of skilled manpower for deploying my model and also for monitoring and am i clear thank you you're clear okay Any more questions? Okay, that's it. I'll continue. Uh, thank you. Thank you for giving the chance to raise the question. Uh, I'm David. Uh, I have a question in the evaluation matrix uh, part. As you presented, uh, there are a number of uh, evaluation matrix for evaluating our specific uh, machine learning model. Here, my question would be, how will we choose uh, uh, which knowledge matrix uh, would be uh, uh, important for a specific uh, machine learning model? How, how could we choose? It's built on your problem. For example, if your problem is a classification problem and you have chosen a clustering algorithm uh, evaluation matrix, it doesn't show you uh, anything about it. And also, if you have, uh, like you can consider uh, specificity and sensitivity, and when your models uh, needs to be tested on the nature of true positive and uh, the all, th all things, you should have to think of like which mo our model, what did our problem favors for uh, sensitivity or specificity? How can you determine your problem or how can you express your problem in terms of this type of metrics? So based on your problem, you can select whatever uh, evaluation metrics you want and which is feasible for you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other? A follow-up question. Um, can you explain okay. like, the difference between accuracy, sensitivity, and specificity? Okay. When we say accuracy, it's the rate at which the our models become uh, so sorry. Okay. Uh, sensitivity is a true positive rate, or you can measure the portion of your positive uh, and uh, or a true positive uh, rates from your correctly identified portion of your model, and which is correctly identified by your uh, conditions or your algorithm. And this specificity is a measure of uh, the portion of for negatives or correctly identified as a negative. So you can get this from your findings of your model and true positives are the correctly identified uh, labels for your classroom problem and false positives are, uh, they, are need, they are not positive 
objective, but they are at the end of the day, the, your models conclude them as uh, positive. And also true negatives are negative level or a classification. And for uh, false negative, it seeks incorrectly identified negatives rather than they should have to be positive or the actual label for them have to be positive. And also this accuracy is measured for the combination of these true positive and true negative. And they can, the ratio can be divided to the all negative and Am I clear, Kate? Um, I think I got a bit confused when you were defining sensitivity and specificity because the definition sounded similar to precision and recoil. Yeah, it's somehow related to precision and recall, but exact the precision is the uh, positive predictive value, or you can consider as a true positive uh, divided by this true positive as well as false positive, this precision. And recall is also for the recall, you can have it like the average or the all heat maps of your uh, model. So it's somehow different from the sensitivity and uh, specificity. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Any more? Any other? Yeah, I have a question. Sorry. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. My okay, question. Proceed. Okay. My question yeah. is uh, on the topic data preparation. Okay. On what criteria uh, we choose the essential columns okay. from uh, a given data? Based on your, it's based on your analysis, like you can perform different, different analysis on your data set. Does this represent my uh, entire problem or not? You can decide by seeing your, what you have on your hand and also by checking them uh, independently, each variable, um, what you call each attribute as well as you can create your own uh, attribute which is needed for which is derived from the other attributes found on your data okay. Okay. I've got your answer uh, your question yes, yes. Okay. it's the problem which which guides you in order to implement everything. So you have to focus on uh, formulating your problem, then selecting each attribute based on your problem for uh, solving this business problem. Okay, any more? Is that Thank you, Malik. So my question is, while developing our models, uh, how you consider the data set for the... Can you hear me? Uh, 
Hello? Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay. So my question is like, while developing our model, we needed our I'm hearing you, you can proceed. We need to consider some data data test for for the uh, for our algorithms. Do we have any specific thing or a general thing to consider a specific data for the testing on the algorithms? Can you repeat? So Sorry, why I didn't you get your point? Uh, why are we continuing for developing our models? We need some data, the data tests, right? Data tests yeah. for for uh, developing on the algorithms. Yeah. How do we consider them? That specific, uh, specifically consider them uh, to run some specific uh, testing materials so, or uh, testing data things. Uh, if I get your question, uh, why do we need this uh, training set and testing set or all things? You are asking me for yes. the need for them? Yeah, the need and how do we choose them? from? Can all you listen to me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. You are asking that you are. It's a rule of thumb, like you can uh, create, a, it's derived from your existing data set, or you can change your data set into uh, 80, 10, 10, 10, or uh, there are many rule of thumbs which help you to split your uh, data based on what ratio so you can uh, uh, reserve 60 percent of your data for uh, training purpose and you can reserve 20 percent for uh, testing and 20 for validation so this type of rule of thumbs help you to Thank you again. Split your data set. Thank you. Uh, am I clear? Yes, Marley, thank you. Okay, any other? Let's proceed to the demo part. So Any other question? Uh, the challenge to notebook, right? Avocat, can you help me to present the demo part? Uh, no, no challenge too, but it's a demo idiot, Twitter idiot. Let me present it. Okay, okay. I'll just start presenting.
So here is my almost the starter notebook for your uh, let me show them this one and we will go to the chat challenge one. Just a quick introduction. So here we have uh, a problem on this Twitter data set. So we want to analyze people's what people are saying or what people are uh, uh, people's attitude toward this there Sorry, can you mute your mic? Uh, and also, uh, what are the most tweeted topics in the Twitter? So we should have to find this. We have these two problems. And from this, Uh, for the topic modeling part, we are clustering a list of topics and, uh, we can't probably hear you. which are most tweeted by users on Twitter. So identifying the topic will be, or discovering this uh, topic will be our task for the first one. And for the second one, social media monitoring and and also it's for gaining insight what did our customers feel about our this So it um, seems uh, Mallet's network is not so strong. So I am going to um, present what she has for us. Um, let me, can you see my screen now? OK, OK, cool. Uh, so Mallet was, OK, so as, as, as prepared in the notebook, um, she was going to explain what um, Pandas is what it does and what it is used for. Uh, so Pandas is a Python package for data querying and analysis. It is well known for its versatility in reading numerous types of data files, and it also allows for simple data modeling and visualizations. In case there's anything that happened, I can't really see the um, chat box now. Aaron, can you like speak up if something is like not going on? I mean, not going straight the way we want it. Hello. So um, this is just Hello? Uh, explaining what each Python, I mean, each library does. Uh, Hello, Abubaka. Abubaka. Package for data manipulations and analysis and query. So when you have a CSV file, Abubaka. You use pandas to query this uh, format in the way you want and then get Abubaka inside as you um, need. Hello. And the Matplotlib is an exclusive visualization Hello? library. And it is used for um, producing visuals, including a 2D visual and 3D visuals, as well as uh, animations. It also serves hello, 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 hello. for other numerous libraries. For example, the Seaborn library is um, built on top of Matplotlib, 
and the Plotly library also the Plotly library also um, hello okay i can't hear you can you speak up Pushpa? yeah can you hear me now hello no i still can't hear you hello can you hear me now usman me i can hear you over here ah okay good abubakar can you i think people can hear me maybe your mic is having yeah i can hear you now sir okay. uh, so you are actually presenting the second tutorial that's my tutorial ah, i thought that was what uh, mallet was presenting no no mallet was preparing ed twitter twitter something Okay. So there's a file ed twitter something uh, in the Tuesday file ed twitter. Yeah, got it. Got it. Is, she, is she back online now? Can she continue? Malik, are you Sorry, my network is not good. Okay. Uh, Please continue. So let us proceed. Uh, yeah, I'm back. Can you hear me? So from our yes uh, last discussion, Malet, we can start it, sorry, it's our own here. I think it's it's better if somebody else uh, presents. Business understanding step. Yeah. So our topic here, our topic is to model or our problem is to model a topic from a given data set. Sorry, can you hear me? We can hear you. Sorry, Abu Bakr is presenting. We can hear you. Everything's perfect. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, so here we have two problems. Uh, the first one is uh, we, we want to identify uh, uh, which is most tweeted topic from our Twitter dataset, and also the second is to identify people uh, attitude. To, uh, and their emotion to our this uh, this disaster and des uh, desertification. So our task is, is to discover abstract topics from tweets and. Uh, the second for the second one, our task is to classify tweets as positive or negative tweets based on uh, the sent sentiment wise. So this is the all business description uh, problem description I have for this problem. So basically, to, to to proceed to the second step, we should have to have uh, loaded the necessary package. So I have loaded uh, necessary package here. And here, uh, Matplotlib and Seaborn for Floating purpose and world cloud also, and also this uh, Genzim and, and for, for text proceed and pandas to check the statistical, uh, statistical concept. 
to to treat spastica which is Please, Miss, check your mic. Please, Miss, check your mic. Uh, hello. Hello. Can anyone hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, let's see if I can share my screen and uh, I'll just uh, pick up. Uh, is it in three? Okay, I'll just stop sharing. Uh, Malet, can you just pause a little? Let me, let me share my screen. Can you guys see my screen now? Yeah. Uh, okay, good. And can you guys hear me clearly? Yeah. Good. So I will take it, take it up from here. So what Malek was actually explaining was uh, a kind of uh, 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 data manipulation and monitoring using uh, pandas. So here, I'm going to start directly from reading in uh, files using uh, pandas. So pandas is actually versatile in reading different files. So here we are just uh, uh, basically using uh, a CSV file, which is the comma separated uh, uh, file here. And uh, the data being used there is uh, uh, the data you guys worked with yesterday. Yesterday it was a JSON file but if you go through the code from yesterday, you realize that uh, in the end, we actually saved a CSV file at the end of the uh, code. And uh, we also clean the data. If you uh, could remember, if you, uh, you can still go through the, I know some of you are still working on the, on the task from yesterday. So please go through it and uh, try to understand some of the lines uh, so you see that. So this is the clean data in CSV format. So we are trying to read this in using uh, pandas uh, uh, read CSV. So this uh, uh, is used to read CSV. So we have different uh, uh, function, functions in pandas to read different files. So you get to know that later. So this is the file uh, which there are different columns and you can just go through it yourself. The file uh, is also in the uh, uh, the the folder shared with you guys so please go through it yourself because uh, we are running out of time so now uh tweets.info tweet now is a pandas data frame because here yeah, you name this tweet a pandas uh, uh uh data frame read file uh, so now tweet is a pandas data frame and you can get the info this info actually prints out uh the information regarding every column in that file in that uh, data frame sorry so and uh it gives you the number of uh, null values uh which is uh uh all these values minus uh which is the total number of rows in that uh, data frame minus these non-null values so you can see here these are the non-null values which are values that are actually that actually contains data points right they are not none none means maybe missing values or oh someone cannot hear me hello guys can you hear me yes go ahead. We can yes hear yes we can we can hear you ah i thought someone said someone said uh, okay so now this uh Tweet.info gives prints out uh, uh, rows that actually contains uh, data points and the number of rows that contain data points for each column. So you can just go through it. Now, uh, what is being done here is just to get the sum, uh, uh, the columns containing uh, 
uh, the total number of missing values here. So I'm going to rush through this. I'm sorry for that. And here it's uh, selecting uh, just three columns. So selecting columns is quite easy using uh, uh, pandas. Like I said earlier, uh, like Abubakar said in, uh, in my presentation and that you have in the afternoon, that, uh, pandas generally, you can use pandas for data query. You are going to learn SQL also, um, maybe later in this week, which is also used for data query. But in Python, generally, we use pandas. It's, it's, it's a very uh, uh, wide known library in, Pan in uh, Python for data query. So this is uh, querying the data. We want to query just these three columns, original text, clean text, and language. And using that, we have this output. And uh, this drop NA is a method in pandas, which is used to drop the non values. Those are the rows that contain empty, empty values that, are, uh, that, that do not have any data points. So that is drop.na. And uh, what I need to tell you guys also is you can also do tweet.drop drop na then followed by question mark followed up by question mark to get different hello okay drop that na then question mark question mark run this you get the uh, uh documentation oh sorry i didn't run this from the beginning Should have run this from the beginning. So one thing is you can just uh, uh, put question mark in front of any any function in Python. Then you get uh, the uh, documentation of that function, what that function actually does, and how you can uh, use the function. So this is what this is used for. And uh, we are running out of time. I don't know if uh, I should stop now. If there's, I'm not sure if there's any program after this. Abu Bakr, please help out here. Is there any program after this? Uh, we have the community activity here and um, 12. And then this tutorial is supposed to last for one hour so that the trainees can go back to uh, complete the task for today. Okay, good. Uh, what we are going to do is I'm going to mention some of this in the afternoon tutorial. You guys can also please check it out so that uh, when I'm explaining you, you, uh, you follow me quickly. So I'm going to go through this maybe for the first few minutes in the second tutorial before I actually start with the modeling part in my tutorial in the afternoon. So uh, uh, sorry for uh, the each today, guys. So. We are going to meet in the afternoon. Hopefully in the afternoon, it will run smoothly. So I think that's all from my side. We meet in the afternoon. Abu Bakr, anything else? If you, if you have any questions, just post them on the tutorial um, channel, on the Rocket Chat, and then we'll attend to it. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, thank you.